Tell me something, Clark Are you sad you're not getting top four? Yo, what's happening, people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you are all doing well today. Today. I really hope that. Welcome back to Chelsea News, the Nearly Daily series. Really bad. Okay. The Nearly Daily series here where I talk about Chelsea News. Jesus, what's wrong with me? Stayed up late celebrating Chelsea's win at Anfield and a good moment for Chelsea Football Club. But today is a new day and we move on and I want to talk about a couple of things. I want to speculate on whether Chelsea have found their Thiago Silva replacement. Also, I want to pull up an article from Football365 talking about how this sport build Erling Haaland story could be nonsense and really there is only one stumbling block for Chelsea and Erling Haaland. Believe it or not, footballs are not the most important balls to us men. <laughs> That's right, a big thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. You know what man, 98% of my viewership are all men over 80. Come on guys, it's 2021 and it's time to take self care and grooming seriously. Your balls will thank you. <laughs> That's right, thank you so much to Manscaped for sponsoring this video and also sending me a lot of gear to show you what they've got. The Manscaped Weed Whacker. The Shears 2.0. The Manscaped Shaver itself, which looks pretty decent. Ball deodorant. And of course, ball toner. I must remember George made me promise to send this to him in Bali. Guys, really good quality gear. You have the opportunity to get 20% off with free shipping when you use my code FT20 or click the link in the description. Take grooming seriously and go click that link in the description now. So the first topic and subject matter in today's video isn't actually a new story that I wanted to dissect, although I'm sure there'll be a headline somewhere eventually about this. But Chelsea have been linked with so many centre-halves, a top-tier centre-half to replace Thiago Silva. Now, under this appropriate coaching, I want to pose the question to you, the viewer, have we found that in a player we already have in Andreas Christensen? <gasps> now, a lot of you will be saying, look, Jan, he plays incredibly well in this back three and he's in a good vein of form, but we've seen him in a two and we know his flaws. True, and I concede to all of that. But Andreas Christensen, people forget how highly rated he is by the club for a long time. I've spoken about this on the channel before. Pep Guardiola wanted him. He latched around him in 2017 or something. Incredibly highly rated passing centre half. The likes of Matt Law said it on the Londoners Blue podcast. Chelsea are terrified of him being sold to a, like a Barcelona or Real Madrid or somehow ending up there and being an excellent passing centre half. Look at John Stones now at Manchester City. These kind of profile of strikers can be absolutely superb in the Premier League. It has been proven. I took issue with Andreas Christensen that he's lightweight. How sometimes he stays down, gets bodied, doesn't get up. John Terry said it on Instagram that time when he stayed on the floor and the opposition scored, I forget which game and which team, but you need to get up and fight. And that's what frustrated Chelsea fans. He's a confidence player, but he needs to, if he can evolve out of this confidence player style attribute, then we could be in business seriously with Andreas Christensen. Maybe he is like a John Stones type of character and needs a big sort of strong boy next to him, like a Ruben Diaz to make him better. But maybe we can have that in, I don't know, I was to say Rudiger, but I do not want to see it. You said to, you said to me like a few months ago, Jan, do you want a two centre back pairing of Rudiger and Christensen? I would have probably told you to, F off. <laughs> but if we are genuinely to keep this system under Thomas Ducal playing free at the back and ultimately we need to find a way to score more goals because we can't rely on Mason Mount Wonder goals or Olivier Giroud acrobatic aerial kicks to win 1-0 in games, we're going to need to find a better attacking flow. But I think that will come over time with chemistry with the attackers. If we are to keep this free back system, then Andreas Christensen could be the long-term successor for Thiago Silva, you know, as Piliqueta plays right centre back, something that I've spoken about a lot before is I think Reese James could eventually play right centre back, especially if Callum Hudson Odoi is a wing back. And then you've got the likes of Gerhi and, you know, maybe Malang Sar and Xavier Mbiamba, these players that we've spoken about that might be able to come in and play the outside centre halves. 
with a little bit more stress on you than when you play on the two. Still, the main sort of point of this part of the video is Andreas Christensen sort of yet to enter his prime as a centre-half footballer. Loads of, you know, a massive wealth of experience at Chelsea, at Borussia Mönchengladbach in the Bundesliga. You know, for his country, he starts. He's an excellent player. And if he can come into this new sort of vein of his prime under Thomas Tuchel with decent coaching, I think he could be excellent. Like, I've, my biggest criticisms with um, Christensen were never his ability. We all know he's an excellent passing centre-half. I think he's got like a 92% passing accuracy out overall in the Premier League. It was really his physicality and confidence. And if he can, like, you know, harden up a little bit and gain more confidence, he really can be a top, top tier centre-back. So anyway, I'm posing the question to you guys because I'm really interested to hear what the fans think about this situation. So make sure you get down in the comment section below and let me know your thoughts, feelings and opinions on this subject as we move on to the new story regarding Erling Haaland. Right, so this story is being published this morning, uh, today I believe, from Football 365, talking about Haaland. Of course, he was heavily, heavily linked with Chelsea until Sport Build in Germany released that story saying Chelsea essentially aren't in the running because they're not he <laughs> because they're not recognised as a big club by Haaland or something. Which surely is nonsense, but you know, after some reflection and hearing from a lot of German football fans and stuff, Sport Build absolutely is like the sun, apparently, in Germany. Like I previously stated in the uh, other Chelsea News video, my experience of Sport Build is them releasing that story about Mason Mount and Kai Havertz, which, you know, was absolute nonsense, and uh, Mason Mount's dad, Tony Mount, came out and pretty much said that. You know, so you're just writing absolutely nonsense for, you know, for no reason. So we don't have any reason to trust Sport Bill. And as things develop, it looks like that story could be a nonsense. It's true in Europe, only a select few clubs could get Holland, but they need a lot of money and there's so much financial trouble around European clubs that that even whittles down to an even smaller group. I'm going to read you an extract from this Football 365 article now. A report on Wednesday in Germany said Chelsea, quote, have no chance, end quote, of signing Haaland, with the Dortmund striker set on joining, quote, an absolute top club. Off the bat, yes, we all felt incredibly offended and confused by this statement. Hmm. However, ESPN bring us a report on Friday which completely rejects those claims, with the website painting a picture that Chelsea are still one of the favourites to sign Haaland. The Chelsea hierarchy, quote, believe they can tempt, end quote, Haaland to move to Stamford Bridge this summer, despite interest from a growing number of Europe's heavyweights. ESPN continue by claiming that there are several elements in their favour, with the Blues able to offer an attractive financial package. Basically, they're saying, yeah, look, Chelsea have got a lot of money, they can give him a lot of money if he wants, and not other clubs, or not a lot of other clubs, have a lot of money. Let's read on. The amount of prospects at Chelsea, including the likes of Kai Havertz, Christian Pulisic, and Mason Mount, means Haaland can become the centerpiece of a young, expensively assembled team. Roman Abramovich is willing to sanction the move, despite already spending in excess of 200 million in the summer transfer window. Living in London seems a major draw for the striker, in addition to the club's ambition to win the biggest trophies every year. But ESPN claims there is one key unknown, which is Haaland's agent Mino Royola, who is known to be demanding and a controversial figure. And there you have it, ding, 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 the Mino Riola situation. No one likes Mino Riola, do they? But yeah, it's literally saying this sport build thing is nonsense. They probably dissected that from like a sentence somewhere that someone forgot to say Chelsea in a list of clubs. But from everything we've heard prior to that reported regarding Erling Haaland, Chelsea are very, well, Chelsea are very, very interested. They have been in the player for a long time. As I've reported on here at Football Therapy, they tried to sign him after Salzburg. Anyway, Chelsea have the money, there's an allure to the club, but at the moment of this report, the biggest stumbling block is the agent Mino Royola. Now, when you say Mino Royola and friction with Premier League club, you immediately think of Manchester United because of all these like talkings with Paul Pogba and you know the ongoing circus with that. But Chelsea aren't very happy with them either. Antonio Conte thought Romelu Lukaku was over the line for Chelsea Football Club. Um, before they ended up buying Morata, and obviously he gets him in the end at Inter Milan. He you know, loves Romelu Lukaku, but he was desperate to bring him to Chelsea. Chelsea really wanted him to come home in their eyes, and Romelu Lukaku himself wanted it. But there were some issues financially, and in the end, there was a great package and stuff at Man United. And Mino Riola, like a day or two before, like well, really short before, you know, Romelu went to uh, United. Mino Riola pulled the deal. He pulled the plug. 
Chelsea really, really upset with Mino Raiola and the relationship is poor. So it's not just Manchester United uh, that has a really bad and negative relationship with the big fat super agent. So sure, massive stumbling block, but hey, money talks in this game. And if there's one thing Mino likes, it's money. And Chelsea might be in a strong financial position to make things happen. If Haaland genuinely is interested in coming to Chelsea Football Club, if he's allured by the coach, the city, the capital, the squad we've got, and the ambition to win trophies, which is all fairly plausible, then Chelsea have the means to make it happen. And Roman Abramovich himself wants this deal over the line. It's reportedly sanctioned it, so we move! Anyway, give me your thoughts down in the comment section below. If you've enjoyed this content today, please do drop a like. Show your sweet, sweet love. Comment down below. Let's see some engagement from you, my friends. Help out your boy, Yan, by sharing this video with everyone in your family and everybody you know. Um, other than that, enjoy the football. And I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick, got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't. I love me, baby.